G'day, Stu from UAV Futures here, and today, well, it's a glorious day outside. I'm about to go have a rip and escape, but what I understand is, for a lot of you people in the northern, nor, northern, in the northern hemisphere, it might be rainy, miserable, or cold, or you might just want an indoor flyer, something you can fly around, get your FPV fix. But what we're looking at today, it's a brushless 2S whoop size. It's the tiny GT7 from King Kong or LD. I'm not sure of their name change. I'm gonna link it down below. I think it's about 120 bucks. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna put it through its paces, find out how this thing goes for a 2S brushless racer. How's it stack up against the Mobula? We'll quickly put it on the bench, look at the text and the specs. Then Cal's coming over, we'll fly it around, have a good time and find out, is this gonna be a good brushless, brushless whoop for you? It's almost meant to have an indestructible frame. So that's definitely something that a lot of people are gonna be interested in. And also something a little bit special, bit of a special announcement, something I wanna do going for Forward. Let me know what you think about this in the comments too. You know, recently we did that $10,000 drawing giveaway. You know, we're going through the process of that. Thank you so much. All the all the new patron supporters that have come in and want to support the channel. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. We're going to push UAV Futures to new heights in 2019. But what I want to do as well for my subscribers out there, we've hit 150K. Let's do something special that just keeps giving back to the community. UAV Futures, it's all about getting people flying. And let me know what you think about this in the comments. But it's about getting people the right information getting them flying and look this channel it's become larger than we ever dreamed and there's a lot of drones turning up and what better place give them back to you guys so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna put like a giveaway form down go fill that out you enter your details once and then you're in there forever so uh, each time we're gonna be pretty much every week I want to do like a giveaway when new stuff turns up I can say congratulations to this guy and uh, put it on the screen email you guys email the winner and yeah just a simple way that we can give some more drones away because what better place there's no point in me having lots and lots of these things Things. They're designed to be flown. Uh, that's what it's all about. It's all about having fun. Anyway, that's a bit of a ramble. The link there, if you want to enter those giveaways, just enter once and then for all the future giveaways, the link's going to be down below somewhere in the description. Other than that, let's kick it off and find out how is this little indoor brushless, I got so sidetracked there, how is this little indoor brushless FPV racer going to go? Let's put it on the bench, have some fun, and when Cal comes over, in three, two, one. Alrighty, here it is on the bench. You can see it's quite a small little compact thing. First things first, let's stick it on the scales. And I should also mention, it does come with like a nice little lunchbox with some spare props and those sorts of things in there. That is a nice little touch. But with the battery that it rocks, it's a 2S, 380 milliamp hour battery. So that's about 20 grams. And with this, it's coming in at 40 grams. So you're looking at a 60 gram 2S brushless style whoop. Now I'm gonna use this one because I put, already put the stickers on this. But essentially, as a bit of an overview, what it is, you take it out of the box, it binds up to your radio. I'm going to link a bunch of different versions down below. And it's designed mainly to be flown indoors, and it's got a very, very robust sort of frame. So I know a problem a lot of people are having with their mobulars is they need to tape them up, or they need to get some extra reinforcements on the frame, or to special frames. This one, it's definitely, I, that thing's going to be a very, very hard to break. And also, it's got some ball bearings in the motors, or that's what it says anyway, on the website. So uh, it's actually got a bear here in the motor which means they should last a little bit longer anyway I can't tell time's gonna have to tell on that one I can't really make a judgment call on that now some unique things on this frame if we go through a bit of the components of course we spoke about that pretty special frame the props, props there's some little tri-blade props some 15 35s and uh, they are on some pretty special little motors here they're 9,000 kvs 803 so some very nice little 2s motors they remind me a lot of the sunny sky sort of motors but I guess time will tell how they go as well and then on the bottom something that i think is pretty nice they actually seem to be mounted with some decent screws some decent mounting options as well and then it's very easy to connect right up to your main board and that's where all the magic happens in the middle right here you can see we've got our little receiver on the bottom and something as well before we take the top off and have a look at the internals what i do like it doesn't have smart audio which is a bit of a shame but changing the channels is very very easy because you can actually just access the button by pressing it on the top here so changing the channels if you want to do it manually i think that's nice rather than getting in there with your dip switch and pushing all that stuff this makes it a piece of cake now what we should do well, let's unscrew this and have a look at some of the internals it is only a 16 channel vtx inside which again i find that part a little bit of a shame so all it is it's those two screws on the outside and then you can pop off the canopy and you can see 
Well, in the top, that's our little VTX board that's connected up to a fairly generic CMOS camera there, and I'll show you what the reception looks like that when we're flying that around indoors. I do like how you can disconnect it right here, so if you need to do any work, then, well, it's pretty easy to remove the top. Some nice long lengths of your wires as well. And then we've got our board here. Now, and this brings us to the main board, and I'm not sure, I'm kind of on the fence about this, because look, it's an F3, which isn't the greatest. It's got built-in 10 amp ESCs. Everything is nice and compact in there, and you can see it's a very, very clean looking setup. It's got your old SD, but what it doesn't do is make it easy to swap in generic parts so it's obviously its own proprietary sort of shape so if you break this well you're going to be a bit up the river without a paddle because you're just going to need to order a replacement straight from this manufacturer it's not like a lot of the others that take the standard whoop size this one it's got its own size its own style so if you break it we've got to get it from the same people now if we move on to some of the other little extras uh things like you've got a little led here at the back so that should look great chasing that thing around and our usb connector i really do like this one it's at the front so you don't need to get in the bottom and sometimes you're pressing on the board and it's pressing it up that's a problem with all the other ones i really like it how it is at the front at actually because it's nice and secure you press your usb in there bob's your uncle you're ready to roll now that's about it on the bench because look it's a very simple drone in terms of design wise i really like what they've done it's going to be very easy with turtle mode so you can should be able to flip this thing over nice and easy uh and also probably my favorite part is the frame so the frame is going to be very very robust and I've seen some other reviews of people smashing them into the walls and it seems to be coming with two thumbs up every single time. So a really, really nice robust frame right there. You're going to be very, very hard pressed to break this. And then in terms of the quality, I'm going to give it maybe an... Well, I'm, I'm kind of impressed with it, like an 8 out of 10. So overall, I think it's going to be a fun little fly. But what we really do need to do... I do wish it had smart audio actually and I do wish it had an F4. And for the price, like I think it's 120 bucks. I could be wrong there. It's I'm going to say it's okay, but the proof is going to be in the pudding. What we should do is fly it around, see how it goes, charge up some batteries, and that was one other thing I should mention as well. The batteries, it powers by your balance lead, so take it or leave it. Is that something that you like? And you do get a little adapter so you can charge it. I think you're going to save a little bit of extra weight, but it is going to be a pain if you've got to order some special batteries or whether you want to change the lead out, anything like that. But what we should do, let's go fly it around, have some fun with Crash Test Cal, in three, two, one. Boop. Okie dokie, here we go, flying around, just showing you some DVR, such a good day, so we can fly around outside as well as doing a little bit of indoor flying, which is where this kind of excels at, and you can see right here, I went up and I'm using the Evo radio, the Turnage Evolution, and I was like, oh, that's the wrong switch, I wanted to take it off stabilization mode into Acro, and you can do a few little tricks with it, don't expect to be doing some crazy power loops or anything like that, but if you do want to do some flips and rolls, this thing still is more than capable. Now, where this thing really does excel is if you want to build a track around around your house you don't want to go out to the park you might have a little small area you can fly that might be your backyard it might be indoors but you can still have heaps and heaps of fun like the world is your oyster when it comes to racetracks with these tiny little drones very easy to set up get flying you can see i've opened up the whole house and having an absolute blast now I know a lot of people are going to compare this to the Mobula 7 and I feel like this is a much more tame situation. It's going to be much more suited for indoors type of flying and it is very, very robust. You'll see we'll do a little bit of a crash test in a minute as well. But uh, the Mobula 7 has buckets more power and this one, well I, I find you can't really find the Mo fly the Mobula 7 on 2S indoors. It definitely is better suited to a 1S machine. But if you just want to do 2S and stick to indoors, this thing it's kind of like a very nice easy tame mix, especially for be beginners. So it's very... Uh, uh, I guess docile is probably not the right word, but very timid, makes it easy to fly. Now right here, I think this is where we do a bit of a crash test. I went to fly around and I forgot about the arms, which I got them back to front because, you know, like I said, I'm on the evolution. We go up here and I was going to flick it back into acro mode again. You can see I do a little punch, flick the switch, and then uh, totally disarmed by accident. Landed probably from like 40 foot up onto the concrete. But, of course, no problems whatsoever because of the frame. I really, really like that we're able to get up, get flying again. Absolutely no damage. So that's a big, big plus. I know because it's a little bit of a heavier drone, that's a big plus for me. You can drop it from that height and there wasn't even a scratch on it. Now, in terms of actual performance, I'm just going to say like a 7 out of 10. It wasn't mind-blowing or anything like that. Just a nice, easy-to-fly beginner drone. It doesn't have smart audio, which is a bit of a shame. But if you just want something you can fly around, I feel like this definitely is a nice, durable drone. And the bigger, and it can do turtle mode, which is probably one difference to the uh, Tiny Hawk, which probably would be the fairest comparison in terms of flight characteristics. The Tiny Hawk isn't the best at doing turtle mode, whereas this one, it's easy. If you crash it, you can just flip a, flick a switch, and it's going to ride its 
itself and then you can take off again. So overall, I think, uh, look, they've done a very good job, but it is definitely aimed at indoor flyers, even though it's 2S and probably for beginners as well. But what we should do, let's hand it over to CTC and see what he thinks. Radio CTC, you've turned up. It's a beautiful day and we've got the tiny GT. So I'm gonna get your first impressions and then I'll let you take it for a bit of a spin. Who named it? Grumpy Trev. <laughs> A pretty little thing it looks good it looks well finished um you know i'm not an expert on these tiny kind of whoop um creatures but um look all i know is how i feel when i'm flying them so that's what i'll do today i'm just going to take it for a flight i'm going to tell you if i like flying it righty ctc how is it look it's not too bad it's pretty compliant it's got some good power i wouldn't say it's um on par with the um, Mobula, but it's pretty stable. Look, um, look, there's not much in the way of oscillation or noise. The video feed's very good. I'm quite happy with the camera and the video feed. This is just 25 milliwatt, I'm assuming, and it's doing a pretty darn good job. So the VTX transmission is very, very good. No problems there at all. Is it easy to fly? Because a lot of people want to know for a beginner whoop, how does it actually go? Yeah, this would be great for anyone starting out for sure. It's it's very easy and tame. It does what you expect it to do. It's it's look, it's nothing special, it's nothing fantastic, it's not a racer, but it's very compliant. It's very uh, easy to fly. And from what I understand it's virtually unbreakable. So oh, I'm in the tomatoes. <laughs> what happened then? I just didn't have enough punch to uh, pull up and I've landed in the uh, veggie garden. All right, I'll go get it. All right. So that... Oh, boy. <laughs> You've chopped up my tomatoes, Cal. I have. I've made a mess of it. All right, so what happened there? I saw you, you sort of do a little punch. Yeah, then I came back down. I just tried to even out and I just kept floating straight down into the uh, tomato patch. So even on full throttle? Even on full throttle. It just didn't have the power to get me there. So, you know, um, that's my biggest criticism with this type of model. Well, they kind of, if you're used to flying five, four, three inch, you're going to find the power on these kind of lackluster like I do. But if you're used to that, and plenty of people are, you know, and if you're flying indoors, that's not really an issue at all. These are made for a different style of flying. I, I admit that it's not my favourite style of flying, but for some people who don't have a choice because of weather or whatever, and that, well, they might just have a nice, huge, big three-storey home that they can really have a lot of fun with something like this with. So, look, there was nothing wrong with the camera. There was nothing wrong with the VTX. It's doing a great job. Everything was compliant. It looks like a well-built model. It's really durable. It can take a knock. It's got decent motors. Um, yeah, it's it's a pretty decent little product. All right, Cal's famous four words to sum up the tiny GT. Have a look at this little bird. <laughs> All right, no worries. Thanks, Cal. Four words. Rightio, so there it is. There's my review of the tiny uh, GT7. And look, it's looking a bit filthy now because Cal crashed it into the veggie patch. But overall, what it is, it is a solid little whoop. Definitely stands up when it comes to that robustness dropping out of the sky after I disarmed it. It can take an absolute beating, but it doesn't have the power of, say, something like the Mobula 7. That is a much, much quicker drone. So really, it comes down to where you're going to be flying this. And if you're going to be flying around indoors, you want something very robust and runs on a 2S, well, this is definitely a pretty good option, especially if you're a beginner out there. Anyway, I'd love to know what you guys think. Drop your comments down below. If you, if you want to go into the giveaway, all those sorts of things, click the link down below, fill the form out, because that's how I'm going to run the giveaways. Other than that, subscribe for more FPV-related 2S uh, whoop size action that crashes into the veggie patch. And as always, happy flying. Alrighty, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Definitely subscribe if you're new to the channel and check out these videos. And I'm also going to leave a little link here to my Patreon page because I've got some fantastic Patreon supporters and I like to give back to them as well. So if you want to join the UAV Futures family, there's things like bonus Velcro straps, little bundles of FPV goodies and things like that that also get sent out. Anyway, happy flying.